The building blocks of problem-solving courses, like physics, calculus, statistics, chemistry, are concepts. Surprisingly, concepts actually consist of a very small amount of information that when correctly understood and applied can solve a large range of problems. So students who are successful in problem-solving courses focus on knowing, understanding, and using that very small amount of crucial information. Research tells us these students do this by storing that crucial conceptual information in memory in a hierarchical and connected way, somewhat like a memory pyramid. Small bits of really crucial information, like the two or three key equations of a concept, are near the top of the pyramid. And larger pieces of related important information, like the definitions of terms in those equations, are farther down the pyramid. This is a very efficient memory method because it involves a small amount of information that is highly interconnected. By contrast, weaker students tend to try to memorize too much information with almost no hierarchy or connection, somewhat like a memory dumpster. So formulas, solutions, definitions, everything is just thrown into the dumpster with very little connection or elaboration to other pieces of information. And the dumpster approach may actually work in the short term. You can solve a number of problems very quickly by just memorizing a specific formula or solution. The problem is that in the long term you have way too many formulas and solutions to remember. Also, professors will often choose exam questions that cannot be solved by referring simply to a specific memorized formula or solution. They want to test whether you really can understand and apply the concept, not just memorize a dumpster full of formulas and solutions. So how do you get out of the dumpster and really start building good conceptual pyramids? Here are some suggestions. Many students start learning a concept by trying to solve the related problems right away. So what they do is begin to look for specific formulas that match specific problems and give them the specific solution. Unfortunately, that, of course, is the dumpster method. Instead of trying to solve problems right away, I recommend that you work on getting a good conceptual understanding of that crucial small amount of information. So I recommend using a concept summary, a short checklist of five key categories that will help you identify and connect that crucial conceptual information before you start solving the related problems. The first category of the concept summary is the heading or title of the concept. To make this concept summary, I suggest you simply write down each category of the concept summary like this. And then fill in each of the categories for the new concept you are learning. Here's an example of a concept summary sheet with the categories filled in for the crucial information of Newton's second law. Try to choose concepts, and therefore titles of concepts, that are not too specific, but relate to a typical class of problems. In some courses, physics for example, maybe statistics, it might involve an entire chapter like Newton's second law or standard deviation. In other courses like calculus, it might involve a few sections like the derivatives of exponents and polynomials. The second category of the concept summary is the key equation or equations. And try to keep the number of key equations associated with a concept to a minimum. I suggest one, two, maybe five key equations per concept. The basic derivative formulas in calculus, Newton's second law in physics, and the z-score in statistics would all be examples of the key equations associated with a concept. You can often find these key equations in the chapter summary of the textbook and toss out the specific formulas that are special cases easily worked out from the more general equations. For example, in Newton's second law, there is a very common special case called Atwood's machine, and many students mistakenly try to memorize the formulas for Atwood's machine that are actually just specific examples of Newton's second law. The third category of the concept summary is the definition of each term in those key equations. Included with the definition of each term are the associated units. 
While this category of definition seems obvious enough, students who take the dumpster approach often really have no idea of the meaning of a specific term or the associated units. The fourth category of the concept summary is the additional important information. This involves information that is crucial to your use of the key equations. Here are some of the main kinds of additional important information that you need to watch for. The meaning and effect of zero values. For example, if an object is moving at constant velocity, then its acceleration is actually zero. Sign and direction conventions. For example, the slope of a line moving upward is positive, and downward lines the slope is negative. Reference values. For example, in equations of motion problems, the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Or in chemistry, the pH of pure water is 7.0. When a concept cannot be applied, for example, if you have nominal data in a statistics problem, you cannot use a t-test. If the acceleration of an object is not constant, you cannot use the standard equations of motion. The fifth and final category of the concept summary is your own example or explanation. If you do understand the concept you are studying, then you will find it quite easy to come up with your own example or an explanation in your own words of what that concept can do. You will also find it easier to remember the rest of this crucial information. If you can't come up with your own explanation or example, you probably need to reflect further on the meaning of the concept, or possibly get some more help in understanding that concept. Now that you have that crucial information that constitutes a concept, you're ready to start solving problems. That's what I cover in the next video of the problem-solving series.